We're two thirds of the way through October and I've not taken a look at any new Orc stuff, at least not in my hands. I'd say it's about time I get to unboxing something. <sighs> oh, flipping heck. I miss a delivery. Yeah. <sighs> Get this mask off. Oh, I don't know. No, no, resist, resist. Ten minutes later. Let's get in here. So I have to wait till later. Hide it from sight, out of sight, out of mind. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Out of sight, out of mind. Out of town. Cromite, 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 cromlek delivery. I can't wait to open it. Cromite, 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 cromlek delivery. I'll open it in a bit. I'll open it when I get home. How are you doing, guys? Big Mac Down School here again today. Uh, I can only apologise for that lacklustre. Uh, Thing happening there well I think I'm not sure how that went I'm not even sure if this is live I'm dropping frames left right and center um, there's a my computer's doing something that I didn't ask it to do so I may be uh, maybe dropping frames here and there but anyway there was a bit of an intro for you um, I might just pop that up on my channel another time um, I'm getting messages on my phone now as well which is a bit irritating so let's mute that shall we um, yes this is a unboxing stream for you. Yeah, it's uh, I'm just it's just come up on the screen now for me. It's a bit laggy that video, so uh, it's best to cut it short. I think at the end of the day, and hopefully you can see me and hear me well enough. Um, despite the dropped frames, although it's just uh, dropped down, the percentage of dropped frames has dropped down. Um, but I am still dropping frames here and there. It's a bit irritating because um, I've got like all my settings really low down. Uh, but I think basically my um. I need to clear out some stuff off my computer. So hopefully, let me know in the chat um, if you can hear me and everything. Uh, you might be able to hear me. You might not be able to. Um, and you can understand me well enough. And well enough for us to proceed with this unboxing. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you could let me know. Um, I've got the box here in front of me. Yeah, it looks really laggy um, judging by the stream. I'm just going to turn the volume up slightly so you'll get a bit of an echo. I'm not even sure if this is live. I'm dropping frames left, right, and center. Um, there's a my computer's doing something that I didn't ask it to do. So okay, so it looks like um there's sound coming through, and you can see pictures a little bit. So I will go ahead with the unboxing, but I might film a separate one um, just to put it up on my um, just to put it up on the channel afterwards, so you can see. I didn't even think um, ahead of time. Um, I was too busy making myself a, a mocker in uh, Steve-O's mug. I didn't even think ahead of time to get myself a decent camera angle to uh, to film this unboxing from. So, it's going to be a bit makeshift, this unboxing, but it, it'll give you a look, hopefully, at some of the Cromlex stuff that some of you may have ordered and be sat at home waiting for, and others may have... Um, Maybe wanting to order, maybe wanting to, you know, get a uh, get an order placed, um, but you're not too sure what the quality is like and stuff. So hopefully, I can give you a bit of an idea on that front. Oh yes, I thought it was only appropriate that I went for Stevo's mug this week rather than the pickle jars mug, because it's an October unboxing. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to point you down at the desk and hope that the camera doesn't just fall over. So let's find out if it does, shall we? So here's the desk, and uh, yes, I'm going to quickly open this, and then we can see together what's inside. I'm hoping there's not any address details or anything like that going to be on display. I did try to colour in the address details on the front, but uh, I've just noticed you can actually see my address, so that's why I've tilted the box away from you. Um, most, or a lot of people, do like to... Open. Good evening, Essex boys. Good evening. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say hello to everybody in the chat. Evening, Rivets and Daka, Marcos Castellanos, Dave Dog, uh, Robert Marshall. What is this spicy treat? Well, it's a spicy crumb-like treat, isn't it? Um, Gary Knox, 
and he's just popping in to say hello and he'll be back in a bit um yep so we got gar we got uh, i already said rivers and dakers and i yeah so essex boys and everyone everyone's joining us the regular regular customers uh we've got five likes so far don't forget um you can give me a like if you're enjoying this video but you don't have to i'm not going to force you to oh look at this look at these peanuts here plenty of peanuts i think the uh, stream is taking big leaps forward so i'll go uh, relatively slowly with this i'll just grab this which i'm guessing is a receipt and i'll have a quick look see if there's anything interesting on it for you to take a look at <clears throat> nope it's just my receipt literally just the receipt so um oh, i've not got much space on my desk here so let's just uh get some peanuts out of the way have I, have I got anything i can put the peanuts into i'll put them into this hat Incidentally, these things, if you put them in your mouth, they do dissolve on with your saliva. Uh, fun facts for you there. If you are just joining us as well, we've got a few lagging issues. But I am hoping um, we will be able to get some clear pictures for you of the products. Um, so you can see for yourself what they're like. Got a Bits of War Cromlech uh, card there. Oh, that's a tasty treat for me. What a lovely little gift that is. So we've got a 5% discount code in there, but we've also got a chain axe, um, a, like a chaos style chain axe. So I can add that to one of my, uh, either one of my Death Guard miniatures or, um, so they've sent that, sent me that chain axe as a little extra. Um, it's got a sort of a bit part of a chaos star on it. It's a little hard to see on the stream, but it's got part of a chaos star on it uh, on both sides. That's a nice little, uh, nice little extra there for me to be uh, working with at some point in the future. Let's see what we've got inside, shall we? Let's get a few more of these peanuts out of the way, and then let's get started. I don't know where I've put my knife, so I may be tearing some of these open. I've got my knife there. Steve-o, don't worry. I'm not going to, well, I'm going to try not to cut myself, but you get to see it live if I do. Oh, look at all this business here. First off, this one. This is a not-so-new product. Uh, this was released from last October. I'll take it out of the package so you can see it, and there's not so much glare. Uh, so this one was released last October, and it's the Freddie Mercury-style Grot. It's the front man of the band that they... Um, Guns and Fungus, I think it was, uh, that they produced last year. And I thought, I don't want the whole band, really. I just wanted a little... Uh, a little addition to my order to take to get free shipping basically and effectively it's uh yeah gives me the free shipping that i wanted and this is a miniature that i was eyeing up for quite some time there we go got that little little bit in focus there for you uh the quality of the resin is fantastic really um it doesn't feel like there's too much mold release on it or anything like that but i will give it a wash nonetheless um, I think, oh, I thought I'd lost a piece then, but it's just fallen behind the bases. Microphone there, which will slot in the U-shaped sort of uh, thing he's holding there uh, to, to give it that proper uh, Freddie Mercury style microphone. That is a, a fairly big grot, to be fair. I'm going to see if we've got one to hand so we can compare size-wise. Well, let's put him next to a Meganob, a GW Meganob. And you can see, size-wise, he's a, he's a pretty decent size. Grot that fella. He's not massive. Oh, you know what? I should have a car somewhere. I think I've just put... A, I've moved all my Gazco stuff out of the way so that um, I can do this unboxing. And, of course, I wanted to grab some of my uh, Gazco stuff. But, anyway, yeah, so you got an idea of the size there compared to the Meganob. That's the old metal Meganob. Guns and Fungus on my shopping list. Excellent stuff. I've never eaten packing. You've never eaten packing peanuts, Marcos. You should give it a go. It's uh, well, you know, I'm not. I'm not encouraging you to actually. I'd like to point that out. Um, but uh, yes, just uh, joking, of course. What is this beauty here? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to shift this out of the way, then we'll get a view of my desk. So, let's take a look at this beauty. This is a lot of resin in a bag. This is, I am hoping, one of my um, 
I can't even get the bag open because it's all torn. Ah, oh, it's all just tearing that. Uh, this Ziploc bag is absolutely sealed shut. It's like they've used glue on it as well. I might have to slice this bag open. Can we get it open another way? I don't think we can, you know. Yeah, I'm going to have to slice that bag open, unfortunately. Not to worry. I can uh, just get a quick through it. Yeah, so tonight's stream, I'm going to be uh, probably just going till about 8 o'clock. Because um, I want to watch some football afterwards. You may remember from last week's stream, I mentioned I was a Manchester United fan and they are playing tonight in the Champions League. That's one of the bad things about me slimming on, streaming rather on Tuesdays. And one of the bad things about them being in the Champions League again this year is that I stream on Tuesdays. And uh, yeah, there we go. So that's uh, why I'll be just uh, finishing this one at, um, at approx approximately uh, 8 o'clock. Just seeing if I can get it to focus on something here. And then I'll put that in front. That'll be a bit better, bit of a better way to do it, I think. Nope, it's gone straight out of focus straight away. There we go. I need to um, download the Logitech app so I can set the focus on the camera. Um, because it's good evening Bigfoot Hobbies. Because it's not too um, not too clever in terms of focus on a live stream, this one. All right, here we go. So we've got two legs here. Very nice quality resin. Um, again, feels like there's very little mold release on them. There's a... Uh, the right leg and the left leg. And then this, this is like the uh, headpiece. It's like a, a bit of armor that goes over the squig's head, I think, if I remember rightly. So it's a nice looking piece there. Ah, this is more than one uh, of the squigs. The, um, I can't remember what they call them, gnaw cans or something like that. Killer gnaws, that's what they call them. So basically, these are giant squigs that stand in for killer cans. And we've got more goblin heads. And, uh, yep, a one helmeted one and two um, not helmeted ones. I think these might be the same as them. Yeah, these are the same goblin heads as uh, the others as I've just shown you. Um, so it looks like all the goblin heads are the same, but you get three options. So each squig, each killer killer gnaw can have um, a different different head. And then we get some parts. I don't know where these parts go, unfortunately. Ah, it looks like this is a uh, Grotzuka type weapon. Um, so this is the barrel of the Grotzuka, this piece here. Uh, this is the hogger. If, you'd, if you want to call it that, where you pour in all the junk. And then this is like the power pack of it or something. And it'll all go together and act as a grot Grotzooka on the battlefield. Each one comes with the... I think each one comes with like six weapon options or something like that. Grotzooka there again. Again, oh, this is a, a, different, a different head from the... Uh, squigs here so this are the killer nor rather uh, this is like a an unarmored version of this one well i say of this one this one's got like half a face plate of metal and a bionic eye this one's just got the horn a more natural looking uh nor there yeah they don't skimp on bits at all do they robert again a uh, grotzuka there taking a sip of my coffee and then we've got three of these drills drill pieces here uh, drill arms so I'm gonna pop them back into the bag and then we'll open another bag and see what we've got in another bag <clears throat> yeah because they give you all them weapon options as well if you want to you can uh, magnetize so you're basically future proofing your army um, in order to uh, maximize your effectiveness in game you know, so so long as killer cans are reasonably competitive, you can take them with few in the future with different weapon options. What is this bag of goodies? Let's take a look. Like I said, I uh, I said at the start of the stream, if you've just joined us, um, my computer is deciding to do something I didn't ask it to. And it's taken up the processing space, I think. Um, so basically, this video is a bit laggy, so I may film another unboxing or a closer look at some of these miniatures 
in a future video for my channel. Uh, perhaps one that goes out another week or maybe another day completely. Uh, this is some of the bodies of the killer gnaws. So I'll try and uh, pull them away. Ooh, look at that there. I'll put that to one side. Very interesting looking miniature, that one. All right, so this is the, all three bodies of the killer gnaws here. I'm hoping I can get this bag open a little easier. There we go. I managed to get this one open rather than tear it or cut through it. So this, look at this beauty. Absolutely fantastic looking miniature, that. Um, I think it was Cromlech. I think I've said about Cromlech in the past that I don't love their squigs or their squig type um, miniatures. But these ones have a lot of character and they look mean and cartoony and... To me, these look quite similar to the Games Workshop ones, where in the past they've kind of missed the mark with them. Um, but these ones look fantastic, in my opinion. And you can see uh, the squig is being ridden by a grot, so it still works as like a grot-piloted killer cam. And then the two arms go on the side here with a squig, uh, not a squig launcher, with a, um, for argument's sake, grot zucra on one side and a drill on the other side, or a can claw on one side. Um, yeah, so Essex Boys has got the no killers on the way as well. Fantastic. These are absolutely beautiful miniatures. I've got to say, you can look at the detail on that. Um, if I can get the devil to... Uh, let's see if I can just put my hands there and see if it focuses a little better. It's focusing on my hands, isn't it, rather than on the actual uh, on the miniature itself. But let's move on to another one. Oh, this one looks fantastic as well with the lower jaw. So you'll remember from the previous bag there was two headpieces. Uh, they'll slot in here, and then the lower jaw there. All the detail on the tongue. You can see uh, you can see taste buds on the tongue. It's probably not going to show up on stream unfortunately because um, the focus on the camera isn't quite where I want it. But um, it's got one ear on this side, and then it's got like a almost like a speaker vent on the other side. And the detail on the tail and everything is fantastic. And again feels like there's very little mold release, almost like these have been washed after they've taken them out of the mold. I do wonder if uh, certain companies do that, or if they just got a better mold release that doesn't um, doesn't leave it feeling so greasy. Uh, this one is different in that it's got a, a lot of metal plating on its jaw. Um, so yeah, that's uh, one way to differentiate. It's got two ears, this one. Um, one there, oh no, that's a foot, one there one the um yeah so it's got two ears this one and it's got uh, some staples in the tongue like the tongue split and it's uh the staples are holding it together so again just a lovely little way to differentiate between the squigs there Cromlech do more for orcs than gw do and it's good but kind of sad as well um i'd argue the point that gw have a lot more factions to look after than Cromlech do and not you know, I'm playing devil's advocate, basically. I like the GW Orcs um, and uh, where they are now compared to where they were in the 90s, especially because I wasn't a fan of them in the 90s. However, um, they could do a lot more for Orcs, but it leaves room for third parties like Cromlech to come in and like Artel W and other companies like that to come in and um, sort of fill that gap as well. So... It leaves uh, leaves a little bit of extra room in the in the market, I'd say. Uh, should I move on to this one now? I think I should, shouldn't I? Because I did take it out and put it to one side just then. So let's take a look at this and see what we've got. Oh wow! Oh wow! This is fantastic. I can't even rem fully remember what this fella looks like. Oh. I'm just there uh, punching things into my desk here. So there's a grot there. There are multiple hand options. Ah, here we go. So here's the grot's arms. So the grot's arms sort of slot into place like that. And he's holding onto a chain, very similar to the Games Workshop Weird Boy. Um, it's a little difficult to show you. And so he's holding onto a chain like that. Uh, the GW Weird Boy has a grot holding onto a chain, but the good thing about this being resin is you can heat that chain and bend it into whatever way you want to make it make a bit of sense. 
Um, but anyway, yeah, so this is an odd boy or a weird boy or something like that. I can't remember what it's called on the Cromlec website. Um, and it can stand in as a mech or a weird boy. So he's got a backpack here. Um, yeah, so he's got a backpack on, which will um, enable you to put these um, these pieces on. So here's one of the pieces, and here's another of the pieces, and that will give you a custom force field Big Mac. And you can take him, in that case, uh, with a big chopper and shooter, or slugger rather. Um, I don't, has he got a slugger modeled on anywhere? Doesn't look like he's actually got a slugger model done anywhere, but there's that much on and around the miniature that he looks like he, he could have a slugger hidden somewhere and you wouldn't even notice. You could easily just do a hand swap, um, but he's got all sorts of wires, chains, mechadendrites all hanging down from his backpack as well, so he does look mechy and techy. Um, and comes with two head options as well, so this is like a, a weird boy head. It almost looks like... Um, the runt herd head, I'd say. Uh, that's like a weird boy head, but that's a really nice head anyway. Just looking at that, it looks fantastic. It fits in with the GW range really well, um, and it'll fit in with a Cromlec range if you've got a lot of uh, third party miniatures in your army. Um, definitely fit in with a Cromlec range too. And then this is the mech boy or the uh, big mech head. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna build this guy at, as yet. I might just take the, I might take some pieces off him and, uh, use them to build a separate Big Mac or I might build him as a Big Mac I'm not entirely sure um, I don't know you I guess we have to wait and see with ninth edition what the rules are going to be how many Big Macs you can take in your army and this base is uh, roughly a 40 mil base I'd say it's pretty similar to GW's bases that's one thing um, I don't like with certain third parties the bases are different to GW's bases but this one is pretty similar it's got a nice um slant on the edge of the base and it's uh reasonably deep it's not as i don't think it's quite as deep as the gw bases but it's reasonably deep and you wouldn't notice it's a different type of base on the battlefield in my opinion anyway you wouldn't i wouldn't notice i don't think all right and then we'll take a look at his uh mech boy stick slash weird boy <laughs> um rod stick uh yeah so it's got like um a real mechy look to it with like a I've I've lost all my words as you can probably tell. So but it's got a bionic eye on the uh on the staff and you could you could argue you could say uh, that's the shooter or something like that if you wanted to. Uh you could say that this this staff is the shooter. If you wanted um a mech with custom force field and slugger. We yeah, have some uh, bones on there and just the details on the bones the way the way they curve um at each end uh, they look really realistic in my opinion there's a few um few blemishes and bubble holes in the resin here but i don't know if that's uh, intentional detail what i'm looking at um it's going to be really hard for you to see on camera so i'll just describe it instead uh, what i'm looking at in particular is around this wire here which goes round to the bottom of the um bottom of his staff and I think it's probably intentional to make it look like the wire's worn, but I'm not entirely sure. It just it doesn't look like there's any bubble holes anywhere else on the on the actual uh, rod. Um, so I think that's intentional uh, detail rather than accidental bubble holes that you see sometimes on resin miniatures. Right, let's get on to the next one, shall we? Should we make sure I get all my bits in this bag first. Pull this apart try not to snap it it is a delicate resin miniature i don't i'm not too worried about it though it doesn't feel super delicate it looks like we're dropping fewer frames now anyway which is good it looks like we're getting a slightly more steady stream even if it's not all in focus uh, like i said i will try and do a little bit of a uh, either a showcase video or something like that to show you some of these miniatures in better detail Right, the next one. The next one. Let's see what's in here. I don't even know what's in here. I think it must be other bits from the Killer Nors, aka Killer Cans. 
Oh, oh, I don't think I'm going to need the knife, am I? Or I might need the knife. Let's take a big slice out of it. Not my finger. Just the packaging. Oh, that was a world, world's worst slice. I don't think I actually sliced anything other than the bubble wrap. But hey, here we go. Oh, no. This is not uh, anything to do with the... I'm going to take this out. I'm going to put it to one side. Then I'm going to look what's in the other bag. This isn't what. This isn't anything to do with the killer nose. Then I've got another bubble wrap bit down here, which I'll just place on the desk there. I'm pretty sure that's going to be, yes, the other part of this. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, that is a hefty chunk of resin. Right, you can probably guess by now what I've bought. Uh, if you've seen what's on the Cromlech website, you can probably guess by now exactly what I've bought. It's a chunky, chunky boy, that. Um, so, I'm going to put that just to one side here, just out of shot, and I'll, uh, no, let's take a look at the body first, yeah, so, I'll, uh, take a look at this boy, this is the Norzilla miniature. Gar saying he had a Cromlech Spendium spree himself, I'm not surprised, mate, to be honest, they've, they've really had some fantastic releases these, this past month, and, uh, last year as well. Last year and this year. So this is a, a two-piece howdor. It's nice and simple. Just goes together like that. Barely, uh, you know, there's some small gaps in there, but you could fill them or just patch them up with plastic card or something. Uh, but that is a really simple design of the howdor there. Is it, it is howdor, isn't it? I'm saying that right. H-A-W-D-O-R or something like that. Uh, but look at the detail in there. You can see that. It's focusing on that right away because that's the most detailed thing on screen. That is absolutely gorgeous, all the diamond plate in there. Yeah, that is wonderful. Just a bit of super glue to stick that together nicely, I think. Uh, mostly Zen joined us in the chat as well. Welcome. Uh, this is just a roughly an hour long unboxing video. Um, you've missed the killer nose and um, a weird boy, but you can, of course, take a look at the rest of it. Look at this body. That is a hefty chunk of resin, that. But all the detail, again, on top of this um, Norzilla. I, I keep forgetting the names of them because obviously they're not using the GW names. Uh, the diamond plate on top of this Norzilla is fantastic. Just touching it, it feels really nice. And again, barely any uh, noticeable mold release on there. So I do wonder whether they clean them when they take them out of the mold. Uh, a few little nicks here and there where they've taken it away from the... Uh, the key, is that what they call it? Um, but yeah, absolutely fantastic detail on the armor of this miniature. Fantastic stuff. But let's uh, take a look in this other bag now. Pop, I won't pop these back in the bag. I'll just uh, pop that there and then we'll see how some of the pieces go together. Before I look into the next bag, I'll just uh, try and locate these. Do they go directly onto there? There's a little... Uh, there's a key on this one still. I think they're called keys. Um, so that will sit roughly something like that on its back, on the back of the Norzilla. That is fantastic looking. I'm surprised that it's so flat on the back of the Norzilla. It's like almost completely flat. Um, but I guess, you know, it's uh, it's their design. It's different to GW's. I don't know exactly what GW's is designed like because I've not got one myself. I've got a uh, one of the bigger fellas, but I've not got a standard squig off. My grey pile has doubled in size during the last two months, so that's not, nothing to worry about, I'd say. Gates, that's it, not keys, gates. Uh, yeah, so the gates is, uh, that's a gate, basically. Thanks for that, uh, Gar. Let's see if we can get this one open, or if the packet's going to rip. Oh, we got it open, fantastic. So, just take a look at this detail on here. It's absolutely splendid detail. Uh, casting gates, not caring gates, is uh, what Gar says in the chat. Uh, so we did initially say caring gates. That is fantastic. This is one of the front claws for the Norzilla. It just slots on like that, and it's slightly raised off off of the off of the ground. So you can see uh, in the palm. Um, would it? Would you call it a palm? The sole um, of the foot, I guess. Um, 
Yeah, it's uh, fantastic. Even even detail on there is what I was going to say. So the skin stretching out across as the uh, the foot or the palm, uh, the foot or the hand is opening up there. And then we've got more legs. So this is one of the back ones. Slots in there really well. These like they just slot into place perfectly. The the two legs I've showed you so far. That just slots in there like that. There we go. Look at that. You, it's coming together already without me even uh, even doing anything, even putting any glue near it or resin or anything like that. Two part epoxy I'll be using to build this because it is hefty, like I said. And then this one is on the ground with its toes splayed out. Oh, this one's a. Uh, I find it a little more difficult to locate this one. But I think I'll get it there. May have to just shave a bit off. Oh no, there we go. It's slotted in there nicely. And of course I've dropped it. Thankfully though, it's tough resin, it's not broken. Wow, I can't wait for mine to arrive. Uh, can't wait for mine now, says Essex Boys, rather, not to arrive. Uh, but yeah, so there we go. On the other side, all the detail there. And comparing this in height to a GW miniature, so we'll take one of the plastic Mega Knobs now. That's going to be roughly where he comes up to. So he comes up to uh, just above, like just around the middle of the rib cage there. And then don't forget, you've got the howdor that will sit on top of that. So it's a it's a sizable miniature, um, as big almost as a battle wagon, I'd say, a GW battle wagon. And um, there are now on the on Cromlech's website, there are also size comparisons. I might nip on over there afterwards to show you the size comparisons to GW Squigoth. Uh, just some spiky paraphernalia there. Um, bits that you'd stick on various parts of the howdor, I imagine, and various parts of the armour. We've got another leg. This is the rear one on this side, I think. Yep. So let's uh, just... See if we can place the front one on as well. Oh no, that's whoa! I'm wondering. I think I've got two back right legs here. I think they've sent me the wrong legs. I'll get straight onto them and they'll uh, hopefully sort that out for me pretty rapidly. But yeah, I think uh, that's one of the things about doing a live unboxing. You get to see straight away if you've got anything wrong yeah so they've sent me uh two back right legs um so i've got two of that leg where i need a back left leg so i can't get to building it which is quite frustrating because i wanted to get this built up n next week and get start painting on it um because uh, i'm off work next week and Manchester's just got into a stricter lockdown, so venues aren't open, like uh, food venues and stuff. Um, so that means I'm going to be sat at home for a lot for long periods. Um, yeah, so I need to uh, get onto Cromlech straight away and get them to send me out a replacement left leg because I've not got the left leg. Um, <laughs> I could try and put it on that way, but it's really not going to work, is it? Not to worry, I can get to uh, cleaning them up anyway and... Uh, sort of sticking a bit of paint on them. Right, so here's some of the weapon options as well. Weapon options, we've got a zappy style weapon, a uh, big zapper, a lobby style weapon, um, a big lobber, and a uh, blasty style weapon. Uh, yeah, so there we go. I can't think of what the weapon options are for the squigoth at the minute. Um, but they will roughly uh, with the uh, gates in the way there. So the gates in the way, so I can't show you exactly how it'll sit on there, but just to give you a rough idea, I'll just plonk it on the other way up. It's something a little like that, but that's upside down, this piece here. There we go. Um, so I'm slightly deflated, having realized that I have two rear right legs and no rear left leg. Uh, however, it is, just looking at the miniature, it is absolutely fantastic. Just going to double check in the box, see if there's any other pieces, uh, once I've shown you the head of course, because wow, this is a mean looking head. Let me see if I can get that to slot in even, yes, look at that. So the head comes in two parts, but 
it just slots together either even with the uh, even with the gate still attached it slots together really nicely you could take this head and um sort of that looks almost like an orky head um so you could build uh an orky a giant orc out of it basically if you wanted to i'd say that's a really nice looking head and you can see the relationship to the uh to other green skins and the tongue on it oh, there's so many taste buds on the tongue looking at in the back of his throat you can see his little dangly bit there and uh some fleshy fleshiness there as well lots of detail in that miniature um tons of detail on the armor that goes around his head and then that'll connect onto here roughly he's not got much of a neck that's one thing i'll say he's not got much of a neck um but it's a well it's a thick neck i guess isn't it but then looking i'm going to see if i can get this camera to focus for you you can probably roughly make out the taste buds on the tongue there but there's loads of details on the taste buds on the tongue there it's absolutely fantastic and then loads of texture around the lower jaw as well uh, all bumpy bumpy skin like texture and then wrinkles underneath where it joins to his neck so that is my unboxing pretty much done for you yep let's go back to this so we've got three squig bodies We've got uh, some squig legs in there, but these are obviously a lot smaller. I could, uh, could give him one tiny leg, but that would look really weird. Uh, yeah, so definitely three standard gnaw killer legs there. Yeah, so I'm definitely missing... Let's come back up to me now, shall we? So I'm definitely missing that um, rear left leg, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to get in touch with Cromlech and let them know. Um, has anyone dealt with Cromlech customer services in the past? And if so, um, how good are they? I've heard on, I think I've heard on Orky groups when people have um, when people have said, just get in touch with them, they're, they're dead good normally. Uh, I think I've heard that they, they are pretty hot on the customer service, same as GW, uh, in my experience, have been anyway, whether uh, everyone's had that experience, I'm not too sure. Right, so uh, Essex boys in the chat saying it. He can't wait for his now. Uh, Rivets and Dacker saying it's huge. The tiger wagon, uh, the tiger wagon, the tiger wagon is such a simple kit, and it's bigger than I thought. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, and then Cromlech sort problems real quick. So thanks very much, Gar, for that. I shall get in touch with them real quick, hopefully, and then fingers crossed they can get me that piece out by weekend. If uh. If needs be and I can have it in place in my hand next week to yeah so I'm just looking at these two it's, it's really clear that they're definitely the same leg um, yeah so hopefully I can uh, I can get started on this yeah, I can I can wash the parts I've got so far and clean them up there's a few little mold line areas uh, well on this leg there's a mold line running down the back of it but on this leg, there's very little mold line there at all. So I'll use this leg, I think. Unless there's any other imperfections on it anywhere that are going to make it more difficult. There's a bit of a mold line running around it, but not much of one. It'll be a little bit, little scrapey job. I imagine that'll be nice and simple to scrape off and clean up. Looking at this one. Yeah, again, just like a little bit of a, an indication of a mold line running down the back of the leg there. But these are all parts that are underneath, so... Uh, you don't even necessarily need to clean them up as well as you might have to if it was elsewhere. Oh, this one's running through a bit of bumpy detail on the skin, a bumpy texture on the skin. But again, you know, it's nothing too major. I can pretty easily clean that up. Well, hey, so I've got three correct legs and uh, one rear right leg doubled. That is what we're taking away from this. What has everybody else ordered? Uh, let me know in the chat what you've ordered. Um, I'm guessing, uh, I know what Six Boys said earlier, uh, he's got Norzilla on the way, right? So oh, I, when when I was uh, looking at the Killer Nors, I read that and I thought he meant Killer Nors, but yeah, Norzilla. So he's uh, he's got one of these big, big bad boys on the way. Uh, fantastic stuff. I'm sure, now I'll have to reread it because I say I'm sure, 
when I say I'm sure, what I normally mean is I thought. Um, I was expecting to get multiple weapon options for the Killer Nose, which I don't have as well. So I'll have to take a look at the website and see. Um, it may be, may be that they've run out of various weapon options. Let's just double check my receipt here. Um, but I thought they came with all the weapon options. Drill no, drill killer no weapon, range weapons, scrap cannon, killer no two, weapon, close combat weapon, drill, killer no two, range weapon, scrap cannon, right, so yeah, I must have had to select weapon options then and I've not selected them or something like that, uh, I'm not entirely sure, um, but I'll have to take a look at the website, see what it says on, um, on the actual website, uh, let's take a look over there now. Uh, Rivers and Dacker in the chat as well saying I wanted different weapon options on the killer nose and got the same as yours Cromlech have shipped them into my next order fantastic have slipped them into my next order yeah so I'll have to uh, I'll have to check it out because I don't know like I'm I'm not a massively competitive player but I would like a variety of weapons if possible um, so I'll have to uh, I'll have a word with them as well website not clear but you have to state your choice ah right okay so I, when I read the website originally, I was under the impression it was um, you got all the weapon options in there um, or when they launched the products. Um, and I was first taking a look at them. I looked at them on a stream a few weeks back and I, I was under, I think I said on the stream, it looks like you get all the weapons. Um, but obviously we were, I was wrong. So um, I'll have to take a closer look at that and then see what they can do for me. Uh, if I have to just pay a little bit extra for the other weapon options, it's no big deal. Cromlack, bits of war, do 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 do. So, should we do a screen share so you can see what I'm looking at and then you don't have to watch me drinking a mocha. Mocha chocolate, yeah, touche, ce soir, bump, bump, that's right. Right, well you will be still be watching me drink a mocha, won't you? So let's take a look at this October. I'll click on that and hopefully it'll take me to the page I want. Where's my Viscount gone? I did get an, a Viscount to snaffle, to snack on. Right, so if you've uh, just joined us or only recently joined us, I will be going till 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, you can go back to the beginning and take a look at me unboxing, blurrily and with a bit of lag, uh, some some miniatures from Crumlick. Uh, some of these miniatures from Crumlick. But yeah, let's, uh, let's run down to the Norzilla, click on him. 10% off October 2020. Well, there wasn't when I ordered it, I don't think. That's a bit irritating. <laughs> uh, right, I'm sure. Yeah, here we go. So, this silhouette here is the GW Squigoth, and this is the Killanor from Cromlech. So, you can see there, comparatively, they are more or less the same size. I think it was the, it was the Killanor that came with the various weapon options. And it has done. So uh, let's take a look back here and take a look at. Um, do, 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 do. I'm tempted to uh, get the collector's edition orc freak as well. That's what it's called, the orc freak. So you can build it as a weird boy, or as um, you can either build it as a weird boy or as a mech, a big mech. Uh, they've only got it built as a Big Mac, unfortunately. But yeah, you can build it as a Weird Boy if you want to, I think, as well. They've got the two head options there, so you can take a look at them. Yeah, Shaman, Shaman Ed and Mac Boss Ed. Oh, let's dip that in my coffee, see what happens. Come. So the Killer Nor Squad. Mm. There we go. Right, so I see where it says it now. Here. So I've not select I've not selected that. I've been in a rushing work to uh, get the products in my cart and order them because I wanted to get them before well, not before everybody else, but before the, there was a big back, back backlog of people having ordered them. Um, so I didn't look properly. Uh, that's the problem I've got there. 
So, um, ranged weapon, heavy machine gun, close combat weapon, crushing claw, which is... Uh, mm, where is the crushing claw? It's that one. That one there. Yeah, so I don't love the crushing claw, to be fair. But these are the various options, basically. So we've got a... <clears throat> Uh, scrap launcher here and the drill there we've got the crushing claw here and the machine gun there then we've got a flamer or scorcher here and the um, buzzsaw type weapon there so yeah it's uh it's you'd think though you'd think if i ordered them without changing anything it would have just they would have sent me one of each but um i'll i'll i can mention it anyway when i tell them about the uh, doubling up of the rear right leg and hopefully they can sort me out but it's not the end of the world if um, you know what I don't know would I want all the same weapon or would I want different weapons I think I want different weapons I'm um, I'm like uh, a lot of orc players where you want each model to be like as different as possible um, so I'll mention it to them anyway and hopefully they can sort me out but we'll see Really, really impressive, um, the detail on each of the miniatures. These aren't the smallest miniatures in the world. They're all, you know, sort of old-school Gaskell size or uh, killer can size, obviously. Um, well, most of them are, anyway. The only one that's uh, slightly smaller, well, there's two, of course, the Freddie Mercury-style Grot and the uh, Freak, the York Freak. So they're slightly smaller. Um, but, yeah, really, really impressed with the quality of the products I've received even if one of them's got a wrong leg and uh, I was a bit disappointed with the killing or weapon situation but it's uh, like I said hopefully they can sort that out for me and um, and I can let you know how I get on um, fingers crossed I'll have it by next Tuesday so I can do uh, uh, an update for you and uh, let you know that my issues have been resolved fingers crossed but uh Oh, it's ten percent off October Chromex twenty twenty bundle. So uh, you have to buy it all, including the Tiger Wagon, to get ten uh, percent off the price you would have paid for it all separately. So you've got to spend money to save money. Oh, I let that mocha go way too cold. It's just like drinking chocolate milk with a splash of coffee in there. Just looking at these other bits, seeing if there's any anything else I'd like to, uh, I'd like them to send me. With me having paid for it, of course. And I'm very tempted to get one of the stompers, but I just don't have the time to dedicate to it. Well, not I don't have the time. I know I'd prioritise other things ahead of it. Um, but yeah, the I can get round to one of these when I eventually decide I want a I want to build a stomper that's not a GW one. Um, Essex boys, I need uh, Nozilla to crump some gold beakies. Absolutely. Um, go and watch Essex boys' latest battle report if you want to see a brutal display of ruthlessness. Um, because whew, it was a right old battle report. Spoiler alert. The Orcs lost. <laughs> um... It all looks cool, but I've got my great gargant to finish and dozens of orcs on on the go. Yeah, as as have uh, most of us. <laughs> I've I've not just got dozens of orcs. I've got dozens of other uh, other miniatures from various factions as well. Uh, and when I say dozens, I've cost me in hundreds at least, possibly possibly thousands. <laughs> uh, not really on the go though. I've got I've probably got at least hundreds on the go or at least 800 or more on the go uh would love to get one of their gargants though yeah they, they look fantastic the um orc crushinator death stomper and the orc boom killer death stomper so after the unboxing it's a it's a bit of a low-key one um custards them custards is well hard they is indeed um, you know what? I I really like that T-shirt, but I just uh, I couldn't bring myself to to buy a T-shirt because at the end of the day, the money should be for minis, really, not T-shirts, shouldn't it? 
Please note that all t-shirts are made to order. They will be shipped separately in November, free of charge. Oh, that's good. At least it's free shipping. Uh, so you can get a green one, you can get a red one or a white one. Oh, that's the logo colour. So they're all, all plain black by the looks of it. If they did a blue one, I'd have been a bit more tempted, I think. But not to worry. Right, I'm going to finish this and I'm going to go back to a face focus for you because I'm going to wrap it up. It's going to be a reasonably early one. But like I said, I've got some football to be watching. Hopefully my internet doesn't continue to play up. It looks like I've not dropped any frames in the past half hour. Um, so the bit where I'm just waffling on and not trying to show you details on a miniature, uh, they, the, the internet gets its act together. Right, what was I doing? What was I doing? This. Come into that. I'll just drink the last bit of this coffee. Face focus. That's my face, isn't it? So, uh, Gar saying start collecting channel t-shirts. Yeah, exactly. That's one thing I'd rather do than buy t-shirts from Cromlech or GW, although I do like some of the old GW t-shirts, so I do pick one up. Well, I've got at least one anyway. Um, but yeah, channel t-shirts help support other YouTubers uh, and help them continue. Look forward to catching all the loot. Those killer nors are class. They are indeed. I'll show you a little uh, little bit of a Norzilla there as well. There's a bit of a Norzilla body for you, Gary. So look at that, look at that tail, little stubby tail there. Oh, actually, there's a big chunk missing out of his tail there. I thought that was the way the tail ended, but it looks like it's been damaged in shipping. I'll have to mention that to them as well. Um, update for Gary as well. I've got two back right legs and I've got no back left leg, so I'm going to have to get in touch with them and, uh, and see what they can do for me. But yeah, I can't even see a chunk of tail anywhere. Unfortunately, hmm. if it was in the bag, I could just glue it into place and get a bit of liquid green stuff on the go or green stuff, fill any gaps that were there, but it looks like it's not even in the bag. Slightly frustrating, but not to worry. These are This is why we do uh, checks and unboxings and stuff like that when we get these miniatures. So make sure when you do order miniatures from Forge World, from Chrome like from anywhere, make sure, especially when they're the bigger miniatures, you check that you've got all your parts and what condition all the parts are in as well. Um, so that's a job for tomorrow, I think, for me to uh, be taking some pictures and sending them to Chrome like saying, um, I need you to sort me a couple of things out. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to wrap it up now and uh, try and get my head together. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a, been a quick one. Like I said, Going to go in the room and watch a bit of football now. Just relax this evening. Um, I didn't... I think I was just going to crack on with uh, some gas girl stuff, really. But I didn't actually... When I when I realised these had been... They'd attempted delivery yesterday. Um, I thought, I better do an unboxing, a live unboxing. And uh, let people see what they can expect if they've not already received their orders. Um, so, fingers crossed, Cromlech can sort me out... Um, Going off what Gar said, well, there's a bit of the mould in there, I think. Interesting. Uh, going off what Gar said, they're, they're really uh, good with customer service. So, um, fingers crossed they can sort me out with a few little niggles that I've got. And uh, I can update you on a future video. Um, I'm going to call it there for now, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget, if you want to support the channel, you can do so by following the link in the description below to my Patreon. You can check out the channel's other social media aspects, elements, other bits of social media that, that promote the channel. Uh, I've got Instagram. You can check out the link in the description below to my Instagram. And I've got a Facebook page as well. It's all Big Mac Dance School. So if you just search for Big Mac Dance School on Facebook, chances are you'll find a... Um, a page with the name Big Mac Dance School and it's my page. Um, and also, uh, yeah, just type in Big underscore Mac underscore Dance School in Instagram and then you can see where I'm up to with various projects I'm working on. I don't post as much as I should on Instagram, 
uh, a lot of the time I'll post a, a picture so you can get a better idea on Instagram of what I've been working on in sh in streams. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it there for now, guys. Thanks very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you on the battlefield. Going off what Gar said, well, there's a bit of the mold in there, I think. Interesting. Uh, going off what Gar said, they're, they're really uh, good with customer service, so um, fingers crossed they can sort me out with a few little niggles that 